How's it going guys? My name's Wilson. The 2020 MVP race remains a conversation with LeBron's dominance after the All-Star break has been playing the best basketball in the months of February and early March. Although Giannis is still the front runner and still the likely favorite in my opinion, James will certainly get some first place votes by the media. Throughout all the amazing individual seasons, there absolutely should have been plenty of times where an MVP winner was so obvious. It was an absolute travesty that player did not win unanimously. Today, we're going to take a look at every time a player should have won the MVP with every single first place vote and 12 times it should have happened before Steph Curry did it in 2016. Starting from way back 49 years before Curry won it, not too surprising for many, Will Chamberlain in the 1966-67 season. There were a number of seasons the 7-1 big man should have been the runaway MVP despite his scoring going down, had the most complete team and still averaged a near triple double of over 24 points, 24 rebounds, 8 assists, shot over 68% from the field and God knows how many blocks played in every game that season and led his Sixers to a league best 68 wins, 13 losses, breaking the best regular season record at the time, often criticized by the media for being too selfish, being too much of a scorer, Will left no doubt by averaging almost 8 dimes for a center, played ultimate team ball, award such as finals MVP, defensive player of the year, all defensive teams, block steals and offensive rebound categories weren't recorded yet, but Chamberlain would have won most of those as well. Knocked off Oscar Robertson's Royals, beating Russell Celtics, followed by Rick Barry's Warriors in the finals. Wilt ended up with 80 of the possible 105 first place votes. Somehow, Nate Thurman got 15 of them, had way lower numbers than Wilt. His team only won 44 games while he missed 16 of them. An absolute joke of a decision. Russell's numbers weren't close to Wilt's either. Oscar's team finished under 500. Barry had the scoring numbers, but San Francisco won 24 less games than Philadelphia. Those writers back then were absolute fools. 1970-71, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar coming into the league, one can say Lou Alcindor was already the best player in the game. At 7-2, he can simply do everything, had the sky hook, the athleticism, the defense, and the slam dunks, unstoppable on all cylinders. Before the UCLA prodigy's arrival, the Bucks won 27 games. All of a sudden, 56 wins his rookie season. After landing Oscar Robertson, the Bucks won 66 games, a 10-game improvement with the 23-year-old Phenom putting up all Almost 32 points, 16 rebounds, 3.5 assists on 58% shooting. Jerry West and Dave Fink's teams didn't even win 50 games. Willis Reed's Knicks won 52. Teammate Oscar Robertson had 5 first place votes who averaged under 20 points a game. And the other random first place votes were just disgraceful. The immediate rise to fame and taking over the NBA was one of the few reasons why Jabbar's peers voted against him. Having the best record in the league by 14 games, his team went 12-2 in the playoffs, knocked off the Warriors. Lakers and Bullets. Went on to win finals MVP, a season for the ages, one of the most underrated teams all time. Jabbar proved he was most superior. 1982-83, Moses Malone, who proved to the world he was the best player that year and wasn't going to be stopped. After winning the MVP the previous year over Larry Bird, Big Mo was viewed as the savior for the Sixers. With the team being so close in previous years in multiple finals, the 6'10 center was in a league of his own. Left Philly to the number one seed, going 65-7 no other team won 60, as relentless a player there was at 27 and 28 years old. Malone received 69 of 75 first place votes, his team won 9 more games than Burr Celtics, Magic got 2 votes and Dr. J received the other 3, who was the face of the franchise but was getting older, Malone was clearly the best player on the Sixers, was so confident he guaranteed a sweep in the postseason and was almost correct, going 12-1, and only losing 1 game to Milwaukee, earned finals MVP, outplaying the older 36 year old Jabbar, Malone in my opinion is one of the most underrated all time greats. Two years after, Larry Bird 1984-85, after winning his first regular season MVP and finals MVP in 84, Larry Legend was clearly the best player in the game in the mid 80s, one can even make the case Bird could have been unanimous the season before, where Bernard King had 11 first place votes, but 85 the 6'9 small forward received 73 of the possible 78 votes, two of them going to Terry Cummins of the Bucks, who won 59 games and rookie Michael Jordan, the Bulls only won 38 games. 
Magic's Lakers won 62, a game behind Boston, but burst numbers were clearly more impressive than Magic's, had a near quadruple double of 9 steals in one game. In fact, Larry was the first non-center to win the award in consecutive years, although he didn't have his best playoff season. Average just 26-9-6 on 46% shooting, Bird had an elbow injury before game 3 of the opening playoff series against Cleveland that arguably affected him the whole postseason. Struggle in the finals wasn't 100%, from putting up 27 points four points, 14 rebounds, almost four dimes in the 84 finals. Bird averaged under 24 points, nine rebounds, five assists. 38 year old Jabbar had better numbers and won finals MVP. LA simply got revenge that year. But the following season, Bird and the Celtics were even better. Led the team to a franchise best 67 wins, a well balanced and perfect team. Once again, earned 73 of the possible 78 votes. It wasn't Magic Johnson who got the votes, it was actually Dominique Wilkins, whose Hawks won 50 games only had better scoring numbers than Bird, but Larry was the way better all around player, an absolute travesty of a decision. Bird averaged nearly 26, 10 and 7, 2 steals, led his team to 3 straight 60 plus win seasons. Underappreciated by the modern NBA, Bird wasn't that athletic, but destroyed everybody who stood in his way. Because Wilkins won the scoring title, they gave him a couple votes. Bird would absolutely torch the Hawks in the semis, after sweeping Jordan's Bulls, outplayed Wilkins in every way imaginable. Went on to to knock off the Rockets in the finals in 6, Bird had a much better postseason this time around. Average 26, over 9 and 8, 2 steals on 52% shooting, going an impressive 15 and 3, 82 total wins with regular season plus playoffs combined to cap off a historic season. 1991-92 Michael Jordan After winning his first championship the season before, MJ also easily won his second regular season MVP in 91, but Magic deserved considerations as well for leading the Lakers to 58 wins two seasons after Kareem retired. In 92, Jordan led the Bulls to a league best 67 wins, received 80 of the possible 96 votes. 12 of those went to second place Clyde Drexler, whose Blazers won 10 fewer games. His all-around numbers were similar to MJ besides the scoring. The Admiral Spurs won 47 games, received 2 votes, Karl Malone 55 wins, 1 vote, and 1 went to teammate Scottie Pippen, who was nowhere near as good as Jordan. MJ was also by far the best player in the game at the time. Those who voted against him seemed to do so more out of hatred. In fact, Jordan beat Drexler's Blazers twice in the regular season and made everybody eat their worst in the playoffs, absolutely destroyed, abused, annihilated, and humiliated Drexler and the Blazers in the finals in every way imaginable. Right off the bat, his six three-pointers in the first half of game one was a masterpiece. Given one of MJ's worst qualities was his outside shooting, had 53-43-89 shooting splits in the series, averaged 36 a game, Six and a half assists, Drexler on the 25 a game, eight rebounds, five assists on 41% shooting, absolutely had no chance against Jordan. 1995-96 Michael Jordan. After coming back a couple weeks before the 95 playoffs from baseball, MJ was absolutely furious losing to the Orlando Magic in the semis, made sure he never lost a postseason series again, was on a mission after acquiring Dennis Rodman, averaged 30 and a half points, over six and a half rebounds, four assists, 2.2 steals, won an all-time regular season best 72 games, had 109 of the 113 votes, the others Penny Hardaway, 60 wins, Hakeem, 48 wins, and Malone, 48 wins. The voters who didn't vote for Jordan were absolutely disgraceful. MJ's regular season was very similar to Steph Curry's. What separated those two was Jordan getting it done in the playoffs, winning the title as well. Wasn't as athletic like 93, but was a better outside shooter. There's no explanation for the other votes. Jordan would go on to sweep the magic in the playoffs. Giving Penny Hardaway a vote is like giving Kawhi Leonard a first place vote in 2016 over Curry. 1999-2000, Shaquille O'Neal, hands down the most unstoppable force of his generation. Peak Shaq was as dominant and powerful as any body down low, too strong, too big, and too good. After the Lakers hired Phil Jackson, Shaq was dunking on 2-3 guys at the same time, averaged almost 30 points, over 13 rebounds, 4 assists, 3 blocks on 57.5% shooting, but Allen Iverson, who finished 7th in MVP voting, got one first place vote, who led his team to 49 wins, 18 less than Shaq's team. At some point, these voters need to be held accountable for their stupidity. An awful decision, O'Neal also won All-Star Game MVP MVP and made defensive second team 
67 wins in the regular season, average over 30 and 15 in the playoffs, including 38 and 17 in the finals, shown no mercy for the other bigs, have 40 plus points in three of the six finals games, easily winning finals MVP as well. Kevin Garnett 2003-2004, prime KG redefined the power forward position, doing things ahead of his time from passing, guarding 1-5, to led Minnesota to the number one seed in the West, 58 wins in a season where teams weren't as dominant offensively. The scoring was very low in 0-4. KG put up 24, 14, and 5, over two blocks, a steal and a half, was also first team all defense. Shaq and Kobe both missed at least 15 games that season. Duncan missed 13, while Jermaine O'Neal and Peja Stojakovic had team success as well. Neither one of them made All-NBA first team, so there should be no way they should have received any first place votes. Being the first legit seven-footer with insane ball handling and playmaking skills, Garnett's Wolves eliminated Denver in the first round, knocked off the Kings in an incredible seven-game series, but came up short to the Lakers in the conference finals since all-star teammate Sam Gasell got hurt, missed two of the six games, averaged just 16 minutes for the series. The Lakers capitalized in six, Garnett put up his usual numbers, but of course it wasn't enough. The franchise would stink for many years after. LeBron James 2009-2010 In his athletic prime, James was a monster on both ends of the floor. In 09, some thought D. Wade deserved to win that MVP. I highly disagree, but I understand why Wade earned a couple first place votes. But in 2010, James left no doubt, claiming 116 of the possible 123 first place votes. Second place Kevin Durant earned 4 first place votes. Dwight Howard 3 of them. The Cavs finished with the best record for the second straight season, 61 wins. LeBron's absurd numbers of 29.6. 7 points, over 7 rebounds, 8.5 assists, 1.5 steals, 1 block on 50% shooting was remarkable. KD led his team to 50 wins as a 21 year old, but wasn't as close to being as dominant as LeBron. After dominating the Bulls in the first round, James's Cavs came up short to the Celtics, had good all around numbers, but also averaged 4.5 turnovers. None of his teammates averaged more than 14 a game, viewed as a disappointing ending. LeBron signed with Miami after and continues to dominate on all levels, especially. 2012-2013. A near perfect season, James was also at the height of his powers defensively, finished second for Defensive Player of the Year, led Miami to a franchise best 66 wins, his shooting was excellent, averaged 27, 8, and 7, almost 2 steals a block, shot an absurd 56.5% from the field on over 40% from 3. Some nights, he just wouldn't miss. Even the biggest Carmelo Anthony fans knows he should have never gotten any first place votes, where second place Kevin Durant didn't receive any. LeBron still remains the only player in NBA history to average at least 25 points, shoot over 55% from the field, and 40 from 3 with over 100 mix of course, delivered under pressure in the playoffs when it mattered most, especially in game 7 of the finals, 37 points, 12 rebounds, making 5 3 pointers, a truly remarkable season of greatness. Kevin Durant 2013-14, perhaps the most underrated MVP season of the 2010s decade, playing without Russell Westbrook for 35 games, still nearly led OKC to 60 wins, 59 to be exact, averaged 32 a game, 7.5 rebounds, 5.5 dimes, 1.3 steals, almost a block. Durant received 119 of the 125 total votes, the other 6 went to LeBron where James was almost as efficient his previous year, but Miami won 12 fewer games. Durant was simply unstoppable on all cylinders, where Serge Ibaka was the second leading scorer when Westbrook was out. KD also became the first perimeter player since MJ in 1990 to average at least 32 points on 50% shooting, had the highest true shooting percentage of any player to put up at least 32 in a season, Combined with his improved playmaking, his overall offensive game began to flourish at a level we haven't seen from him because James was denied his right to be the first unanimous MVP. Voters refused to let Durant cash his opportunity a year later, went on to have a great postseason of averaging almost 30 points, 9 rebounds, 4 assists, but lost to San Antonio in 6 in the conference finals. The Spurs played amazing team ball, while OKC relied too heavily on ISO style between Durant and Westbrook. These were the 12 times the NBA MVP should have been unanimous before Steph Curry. Which one of these 12 was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I love all of you. See you next time.